the pilot said something. He said that there's a thick cloud hovering around Asaba Airport, and so we couldn't land. So there might be some certain level of delay for about 20 minutes. And so we were up there for 20 minutes. Before we know, 20 minutes turned 40 minutes. Before you know, one hour, we were still there. When it became one hour, we started roving around the Asaba Airport, trying to see if the weather would get better for the thick clouds to go. But nothing. Guys, listen. We were on air for five hours. For a 40 to 45 minutes flight, we were on air for five hours. We couldn't land. <laughs> when the pilot came again, said he now made an announcement from the cabin. He said that based on the quantity of petrol in this flight, this flight can only last on air from now to the next 12 minutes. Listen, you know, this was not a story I was told. I was in the flight. I was there. And so when he announced that this plane has only 12 minutes more to be on air, the same flight where they know they pray, the same flight where they know they preach, people started praying. People started shouting the name of Jesus. People started calling God. People started, some, people, some were even confessing their sins. And I was just there. And the basic lesson I learned was the same flight to where if you pray, they will onboard you if they've not taken off. Even if they don't take off, so even if they don't take off, they will fly. They will warn you seriously. But here, people begin praying. Even elsters they pray. And so, I realized something. In the time of distress, protocols are broken. Whoever must have made that law that you cannot pray in the flight. Now, because that person never did inside plane, we won't crash. Anybody will bring that law. The person never did that situation. If you are in that situation, you will call on that God where you know they regard normally. When you need God, eh? But the truth is, it's better you call on God on a normal day instead of letting situation force you or push you to God. It doesn't help your relationship with Him. How about you now? For example, somebody where you know they call you, you know they text you, you no know, care about you. Then all of a sudden, the person is calling you, asking for it. You feel somehow about it. How much more God? Finally, when the, when the pilot made that announcement, I had 12 minutes left. Mm. He began to do the flight. Finally, bam, we landed. And this was what happened right there. Watch this video. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Umutineke! Tonu Jesus Igwe! <laughs> Jay, you don't see him now. Which lesson you learn? Umutineke, the full plane shout, hey. Even air hostess, they shout, hey. Umutineke, to know Jesus, I should say, even pilot shout, Igwe. You know, people will pray that day. Even people will not be Christians. They call on Jesus that day. What did they tell me? I was there. I don't want to call their religion. But I see some other way I know say on the normal, even one we carry. Oh. You see, you out there who think or believe you can survive this world, survive the wickedness of this world, survive the tension, the pressure, the hunger, the poverty, the stagnations of this world without God. I pity you. There's no greater foolishness than thinking you can survive without God. It's the height of foolishness. No wonder, it's no wonder it is written that only a fool says to himself, there is no God. You see, there are laws that govern this earth. You cannot do it on your own. 
You need God. You think you can survive this world? You think you can wait when you get problem? You will know, say, your natural strength cannot carry you. You see, understand the dynamism of having the presence of God in your life. That is the true essence of Christianity. Who is a Christian? A Christian is one that has the parastating life of God in his body. It's as simple as that. No man is an island. You need a God to survive in this world.